Almost within the shadow of London's Big Ben late last summer, British master craftsmen were putting the finishing touches on a new bell, destined to become one of the famous bells of history, the World Freedom Bell. Just as another famous symbol of freedom, our own Liberty Bell, had done before it, this great bell headed across the ocean on a mission unprecedented in history, the Crusade for Freedom. From its start, the Crusade was blessed by the labor of free men, unstintingly given. For to cast the Freedom Bell according to schedule, Britain's foundrymen had voluntarily worked up to 90 hours a week. In September, the bell arrived in New York to open the crusade to demonstrate to all the world America's true aims of freedom and friendship for all peoples. As the Freedom Bell toured the nation to be greeted everywhere by Americans who wanted to do something for freedom, 100,000 volunteers recruited signatures for the Freedom Scroll. It reads, I believe in the sacredness and dignity of the individual. I believe that all men derive the right to freedom equally from God. I pledge to resist aggression and tyranny wherever they appear on earth. The cross-country tour ended in San Francisco, and the bell was returned to New York, bound for behind the Iron Curtain. Sixteen million Americans had signed the Freedom Scroll to lift the Iron Curtain everywhere. Their signatures, together with the bell itself, were to go to a permanent freedom shrine in Berlin. Appropriately, the bell arrived in Germany aboard the General Blatchford, which had carried nearly 14,000 displaced persons to freedom in Africa. In Western Berlin, great crowds turned out to see it raised to the tower of the West Berlin City Hall. Freedom Bell, whose inscription reads that this world under God shall have a new birth of freedom, reached its permanent site. On the fifth birthday of the United Nations, 400,000 Berliners, 100,000 of them from the Russian sector, jammed into the City Hall Plaza to hear General Lucius D. Clay, leader of the famous Berlin Airlift, now chairman of the Crusade for Freedom, dedicate the World Freedom Bell. It is in a spirit of deep reverence that we dedicate the World Freedom Bell today. We dedicate it to the eternal honor of all those who have given their lives in the cause of freedom. May its voice lift the hearts of freedom-loving people everywhere. Now, as it sends forth its message of freedom and faith, let all of us, wherever we may be, rededicate ourselves and join together in silent prayer that this world, under God, shall be free. later, in Munich, the crusade struck another dramatic blow for freedom, opening a new Radio Free Europe broadcasting station. The studios and transmitter had been built in just six months, a prodigious undertaking, accomplished by free German labor in the same spirit as the British foundrymen had cast the bell. 
other free Germans proudly guard the studios. The dedication ceremonies, which took place on April 30th, featured a Richtfest, the traditional German celebration of the completion of the brickwork. Highlight of the Richtfest, attended by all who have worked in the building, is a humorous toast delivered by the chief carpenter, suitably dressed for the occasion. On behalf of the Radio Free Europe organization, President C.D. Jackson congratulates the workers and thanks them. For each man who labored on these studios did so under communist threats of death to himself and his family. Next day, May 1st, a holiday the communists like to call their own, the new station is dedicated in a Munich hotel. Irving Brown, AFL European representative, proclaims, The free labor world looks forward to a 1st of May when we will all be celebrating together both in East and in West a world holiday of freedom. Long live this future day of freedom everywhere in the world. Mr. Brown is followed by Mr. Jackson. Mr. McClooney, Dr. Schuster, members of RFE, and ladies and gentlemen, the road of history has many, many milestones but only a few of them emerge as decisive in the history of mankind. And I think that today is such a milestone. So in the name of the National Committee for a Free Europe, in the name of the Crusade for Freedom, in the name of Radio Free Europe, and in the name of all those who have put their hands and their heads and their hearts into this superb instrument of freedom, I hereby dedicate this station to the victory of humanity over inhumanity. As this new Radio Free Europe station, financed by 16 million Americans' contributions to last year's crusade for freedom, is dedicated, 15 miles away at Holzkirchen, its transmitter prepares to go on the air. It's closely guarded against communist sabotage by special West German police. This 135,000 watt transmitter, three times more powerful than any radio station in the United States, is beamed to Czechoslovakia. It broadcasts on a medium wave band, so Czechs can hear it on any ordinary radio. Over it, for 11 and a half hours each day, Radio Free Europe answers red lies with the truth and undermines the tyrannical communist regime. Its broadcasters are Czech and Slovak patriots, speaking to their captive countrymen. But this is only the beginning. General Clay now asks all Americans to take part in a second great crusade for freedom, to provide funds for two more powerful stations like this one. Now, last year's crusade reaches its climax as the power is turned on for the first program to Czechoslovakia. <laughs> The voice of freedom is on the air as Radio Free Europe begins telling the truth to Czechoslovakia, the crusade for freedom strikes a powerful new blow for liberty behind the Iron Curtain.